Hi everyone, thanks for joining. This is Ben Lane from Ben's Business Podcast. This is episode number 90 and we've got Gavin Bell joining us today. Gavin from Fat, CEO of Fat Pony Media and his ad agency manages over $1 million a year for his clients and he's a Facebook ads and funnel genius. Here he is just now, we're just getting him to join us. and he's going to join us here for an interview. He's helping entrepreneurs implement his proven system to acquire new leads and new customers with Funnel Academy. And he also runs the Funnily Enough show podcast with uh, some exciting guests on it. And he's become quite famous on YouTube as well, I believe, through his vlogging and uh, publishing lots of really useful content. Michael, please, if you can, share this on Ben's Business Book Club again. That would be appreciated. So I'm just getting the Gavin on here. I've got you just joining in just now, Gavin, so it should work okay. Shared again. Thanks. Thanks for that, Michael. Hey, man. Hi, Gavin. How are you? I'm good. Are we on and we're working? It's... Yeah. Good. Oh, good, 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 good. Can everyone hear us okay? Let us know in, in the comments, Michael, and everyone else that's joined us. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. Uh, have you got earphones by any chance? Because I can hear myself in the background. Yeah. A wee bit? Yeah. That usually fixes the problem. Very echo echoey, yeah. I can hear that as well. Thanks for joining, Daniel, Michael, Craig, and Gavin. Much better. I don't hear all the noise now. Much better. Oh, old school wired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we attempted to do it through our PCs and proper podcast mics, but it didn't work. So we're still going to do this live today uh, while we're both together. So I've done a wee, a wee introduction for you, Gavin. Do you want to give us a quick uh, overview of who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, of course. So um, I guess very quickly, I run a Facebook ad agency. We work with brands all over the world, really. Um, a lot of people tend to think that you'd work with brands kind of local to you, but actually most of our clients are, are over in the US. Um, and we, o over the years, I've developed a, a system, a methodology for helping clients and brands get their get their message out there in the form of content, and and then being able to actually turn those views and and people watching that content into business result, results, so leads yeah. and and sales. And so, um, two parts of the business really. We've got the agency where we implement that system for people, and then we've got the Funnel Academy, which is an educational um, product and membership where businesses can come in. Uh, and, and learn how to do that and learn how to implement it themselves with the support of me and uh, the support of the of the community. So those are the kind of two main things I like to get up to and, and also as well as all the other fun stuff like speaking on stages and yeah. um, creating as much content as I possibly can as well. Yeah, yeah, it was quite a, a nightmare for me actually to to look, ask you a question maybe you've not put into content so <laughs> that made it quite challenging for me to uh, to interview Gavin Bell today because I was I was looking through some content and I seen like a lot of answers to some questions I might have had on top of what I'm curious about so I've got some of my own questions but I thought what other questions might he have not been answered but you've answered a lot through the content so uh, there's a lot of if you if you've not watched any of Gavin's content there's a lot to to watch <laughs> yeah there's a fair bit out there yeah and the we we met at was it Content Marketing Academy the first time I think yeah back in what 2015 yeah yeah a good then. while ago yeah so the, we apart from that we've not really connected that much between no. uh, through things like we've both just been doing our kind of our own things but uh, I just had that idea to bring you on the podcast because we're both we're both doing. Similar stuff in different ways, like I do the search engine optimization, you're, you're providing leads, I'm providing leads, um, but we're doing it in very different ways. So it would be very interesting to hear uh, the way that you're doing that, 
and yeah, like more so the other side of the the ads because one of the things for me, I, I've learned to how to get traffic. I've, I've got good at that through Google, and you've probably know yourself that to get traffic you pay for it, but. I've learned to, to get for free as well as as well as paid with search engine optimization and, and Google Ads. Uh, your special speciality is Facebook ads and funnels. So converting the, converting that Facebook ad traffic you spend to make sure you get a return. Yeah. Yeah. So first, uh, I wanted to ask you about your comp your new company name, Fat Pony yeah. Media. Yeah, pretty hilarious. <laughs> so what what made you come up with changing the brand the brand to that? Yeah, you know, when I first when I first launched the business like five years ago or however many years ago it was, we called it Blue Cliff Media or I called it Blue Cliff Media. And um, like I called it that because I felt like when I first started in business, I felt like you had to be seen as this kind of professional, mm. um, bigger than you are, not corporate, that's not the word I want to use, but like proper business and um, so I, was, I mean I came up with the name Blue Cliff Media and kind of over the years as I then started to find my own voice and become more confident in who we are, what we do, the results that we get um, and started to kind of grow my personal brand I just felt like well first of all the Blue Cliff Media brand kind of took a back seat uh, because my personal brand is, is more prominent than anything in the business so people didn't really people don't really see that brand name anymore, but it still like didn't feel right. It didn't sit right with me, and I just felt like I wanted to change it to something that was kind of funny and cool, so I can tell people or I can prove that you don't have to be this corporate um, like professional brand. You can have a stupid name, stupid branding, and still have a very successful business. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so me and my girlfriend were, were thinking about business names one day and she's she's into our horse riding and stuff and she was like, why don't you just call it like Fat Pony or something? <laughs> and I was like, yes, let's call it Fat Pony. That's so funny. Because I, I, I wanted to change the name to something that kind of uh, I, I felt was kind of funny. So whenever mm -hmm. you tell people, like the, one of the funniest conversations I've had was phoning HMRC to tell them that I've changed my name. And uh, <laughs> they're like, okay, so what's the new company name? And I'm like, it's Fat Pony. <laughs> they're like, S -s sorry, what? <laughs> like, so you always, you always get a reaction with it. And yeah. um, I kind of wanted that. I wanted something that people mm. laughed or smirked at or were like, what? To, to start that conversation. So mm. yeah, it was kind of a, a case of, I just fancied changing the business name. And uh, Fat Pony was the kind of funniest, randomest thing that, that me and my girlfriend came up with when we were when we were thinking about what name to call it. Yeah, yeah, and what a what a change you've got now from like, instead of a name that you're not sure about when you say it, maybe gives you even a, a negative feeling. You're now like making yourself laugh and everyone laugh when you're telling them your company name, which you have to say quite often, probably. Yeah, totally. And the fact that I now have like jumpers and stuff with Fat Pony and the and the logo on it. Yeah. walking around again it gets reactions and it gets people yeah what's that which is which is kind of what i want to do it's like a i, I always wanted a brand that I, f I feel like i felt happy to wear if that makes sense yeah so i don't i don't ever want to have a, a clothing company but i wanted a brand that i could wear it with pride almost and blue cliff yeah. media was just such a clunky boring name that just never really felt nice mm. whereas fat pony's kind of funny and like i got a kitten recently so i got the designers designed a kitten sitting on the fat pony and it's just it's just a bit, it's just a bit of fun <laughs> yeah it's, it's like and more you as well yeah exactly yeah because yeah. you're very into your your personal your brand and your personal brand has been like one of the the kind of key things i've seen that you're you're doing really well and uh, that that's probably one thing I would like to talk about today. Uh, but Michael's posted, I generally want a fat pony t-shirt. So, uh, are you selling t-shirts? Uh, not yet, but there's a few people when I posted the first picture of me in the hoodie. Yeah. Uh, were like, I want one of these. So yeah, yeah, I probably will. Probably will give them away at some yeah. point. Yeah, I, I would be interested in one. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Um, 
Are you still are you still doing the jumping off cliffs around Scotland still? Yeah. Um, when when I go home to Shetland, so I'm originally from the Shetland Islands. When we go there, first mm-hmm. thing we do is get the wetsuits on, jump in the sea. Um, I mean, I live right next to the beach now, so try and get into the sea as often as often as I can. Um, mm-hmm. This is one of the one of those. I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, so okay. I love I love the outdoors. I love anything to do with surfing, cliff jumping, swimming in the sea, all those all those great things. Yeah, cool. so I do it as much as I can. But like in Edinburgh, we don't exactly have the biggest cliffs in the world, so yeah, or, or waves. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, or I wouldn't waves. guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that was one of the questions. Like, I I do actually enjoy your. your your previous contact is a senior kind of confession video about that it wasn't related to what you're doing in the future. So that there's going to be less of that kind of Scottish jumping and like jumping off cliffs into the, the Scottish water and things like that. But there's still some of that and that's still who you are. So like, what, what would you say is like your favorite thing to do in Edinburgh and even Scotland? Good question. Um, you know what? I'll tell you, like it's kind of, it's kind of a, interesting not interesting story but something i learned uh, cliff jumping and hiking and getting outdoors is always like my number well football is probably my number one thing and then okay. after that is is kind of the general outdoors which can be anything and um but when it comes to the content i used to create so i created an enormous amount of content around scottish outdoors and mm-hmm. because it's such shareable content and people What's really interesting is the the business and marketing world, you're never going to get enormous, enormous reach from your content in it. You're just not going to because people don't necessarily want to share that type of content. Whereas outdoor Scottish stuff, it's much more shareable. People want to share where they live with their friends that live across the world. And um, so yeah. with the content that I was creating, I got like enormous amount of views. We're talking like hundreds of thousands, um, tens of thousands every single week. But like you said, it was never p- pushing my business forward. And mm-hmm. what I find online is perception is reality. So whatever you put out there into the world, people actually believe. And the narrative that I was telling through that content wasn't that I'm a business owner, that I have a funnel, the Funnel Academy, etc. It was that I'm an outdoor Scottish guy. Right, um, yeah. Which would, be, which would be great if I had a tour company in Scotland. So... My lesson from that was it's all about the narrative that you tell and the content. So it's fine for me. My narrative now is about the business owner side of what I do. I still do the exact same things in my life. My life hasn't changed at all, but the narrative I have has. So it's business, almost fell off my chair. It's business first and and then the outdoor stuff second. So it's fine to share mm-hmm. that, but through through a specific narrative. Yeah. Okay, like five percent of your your content or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, that's that's interesting. I I found that video kind of confession video. You were kind of being very vulnerable about the fact that right, I'm, like admitting the mistake you made and that you're you're going to really change things. And that lesson was quite powerful to me as well because there's definitely times where you can get carried away with like oh, we got more views there, but does it really grow your business? And I guess that's what both of us are really about. And we, if we don't practice what we preach, then, yeah, we're, we're misleading ourselves and others. So um, making sure, uh, for me, making sure I get the right, the right uh, uh, guests onto the podcast for what this, this is targeted. And one of the things I think is worth a discussion as well is the idea that it's finding the clarity of where you want to go as well. I guess that's a journey you've been on from le- that lesson. And I, I'm all, I think we're always on it. We're always changing like who we are, what we're, what we're doing when, when you're always growing, changing your own perception and then wanting to change the brand and change company names and things. It's, it's a, it's a constant, um, it's a constant evolution. Yeah. that we have to go through we're always uh we're, we're we're changing so therefore our brand needs to change and our marketing message changes so we have to continuously update that marketing message that we're putting out there and that is quite challenging i don't know what your thoughts what are your oh, thoughts on that yeah 100 percent. like the it's it, that what you just described there is exactly how i live my life and <laughs> like the 
the funnel academy so inside the kind of main methodology that i teach here there is like we're going to put some with any marketing you put something out to the world assuming that it might work mm -hmm. and then you look at the data and say well that doesn't work that didn't work this did work let's try this let's try that let's try this let's try that and it's the same with your business brand as a whole it's the same with you as a person like go and do something you try it you see whether you like it and you don't and based on that you then continue doing it or you don't continue doing it mm -hmm. and as you move through this journey of life and you try different things and you see different places and you start you like you start to get a better understanding of where you want to be where you want to go what you enjoy and that over time that's going to change like for me i was speaking to somebody yesterday about this which is like for, for me personally, when I first decided I wanted to run a business, the, or growing up, to be honest, all I wanted was to be self-employed. So I didn't care what type of business I was in. I didn't care how much money mm -hmm. I made. I just wanted to be self-employed. And then you get to being self-employed, and then you maybe want to hit a certain income target, and then you get to that, and then you want something else, and you want something else. And as you want all these different things in life, like, of course, your branding, your messaging, your all these things are going to are going to have to change um i mean even like my own marketing doing something as simple as finding like really nailing down your customer avatar that's mm -hmm. something i do like every six months because okay as i work with more people uh, i start to like it's very easy five years ago when i started business i could do a customer avatar and see and write down the perfect customer for me now I'm five years into the game. It's going to be completely different. Yeah. Because I've I've worked with different people, with both types of business and personality and interests and like it's all of these things are constantly changing, constantly evolving, mm -hmm. and that that includes us. Yeah, and that's like I, I'm a I run a web design agency and marketing agency, and I always recommend that the clients don't stick to a website for more than a year because really their, their website should be outdated based on what we have just talked about uh, based on that the website won't what you're you put on your website a year ago what shouldn't be relevant by now if you've if you've grown enough in the last year or you've things have uh, evolved enough in the last year totally. uh, someone said uh, hannah has posted uh, she's also from shetland her home um, i found out about gavin bell through scottish through the scottish content I also run a local business in Shetland to his content. And I can't read the rest because I can't click on more, but I, I think I get the idea that it's kind of the idea that I learned from another guest I had on the show. He talked about shared activities. So mm. having uh, been like-minded to people who are, could also be business owners, that was actually, that, I'm glad you mentioned that, Hannah, because one of the things I wanted to ask you is because of all this content, a lot of followers that you have kept, that even though you're talking about business, you've kept the probably the right fans from yeah. maybe I think eight is it uh, roughly eight thousand subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, just under eight thousand subscribers on YouTube. Gavin has at the moment, and although he changed the content that he, that he built that audience up with to more business focused, he, he maybe lost a few subscribers, but kept the people who are actually interested in the business stuff, and that's what. Hannah's message, you found out about Gavin through this sort of more broad area about Scotland and they were interested in that, but they've, they've grown to like Gavin as a person and, and then realized, oh, he also does Facebook ads. And that can be a really good way, I, I think, for networking with people. If you, have like, like you enjoy a similar sport or you're from the same country or whatever, um, or they have relatives in Scotland, then they start to like the person first and then it comes naturally that, oh, I also do Facebook ads. But you have to mention that part and never forget that, like, actually, I am a web developer. I, I, do, do, I do do marketing for businesses. I, I generate leads as well. And it's very easy to get carried away with the, yeah. the content we're creating, the personal brand and the, what we find fun and what people find fun about us. And then not mention, not do that right hook, as Gary Vaynerchuk talked about, is exactly. actually selling yourself, selling your yeah. services. Exactly. Like, I mean, with the, and that was kind of the trap that I fell in with the Scottish content was, I would say, I would say Hannah is almost an exception to the rule there and because of the kind of local connection that we have. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the the trap that I fell into the Scottish content was whenever I mentioned myself or anything to do with business in that content, the drop in reach and comments and shares was enormous, which meant that I then just never mentioned it um, because I was okay. addicted to the likes and the views and things. So that's kind of yeah. what I was speaking about in terms of now the narrative I tell is business owner first, but I also have all these different interests. Mm -hmm. So people can see the main thing that yeah. they're going to follow me okay. for. And they can also then go, oh, but he's also into hill walking and I'm interested in hill walking. And that might just be the tiny little thing that gets them to then reach out or okay. to buy the, buy the product. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Mm, yeah, because it's, like you're saying, it's not a TV show we're, we're putting out there. We're putting, we want to get to the, the value that will grow. Like this, this Ben's business. Uh, this is part two of the interview with Gavin Bell, where there'll be a bit of technical issues with the Facebook there. So you just love tech. I love it, yeah. <laughs> You've got to stay calm when all this has happened so and just continue. Stoic energy. Yeah. <laughs> so where I was, where I was, was I was talking about um, the purpose of Ben's Business Podcast is to grow people's businesses. That was the point of it. And I have found that in myself in creating content online where oh this got more views and it was slightly off topic of uh, business uh, and then going further down that track to get addicted to the, the view count and um, for example last week i enjoyed interviewing a, a runner um Derek gray who's who's a very successful runner and locally and, and internationally and i enjoyed that that interview but it isn't it isn't going to necessarily direct grow my business so that was a great reminder watching your video about that uh, on what what content on where you're going with your content yeah because it is fun to interview guests it's, it's fun to talk about what what you enjoy but you have to have a real uh, decision on what is what is the purpose of this content I'm creating and and staying focused on that and Ben's business podcast is is about business and growth so it's it's that reminder that um i want to create valuable content that people will come back because it's growing their business they've made money by watching this podcast and learned really valuable stuff that that will do that and with that one purpose the podcast is known as that it's not known as something else yeah is that is this piece of content that is going to grow my business or is it a piece of content i'm creating for fun and I'm not saying you have to only create content that's for your business, but you need to make a decision there uh, based on your own resources. What's what's the smarter thing to do? Um, and yeah. for me to spend hours editing and creating video content that was nothing to do with my business did not make any sense whatsoever. Although it was yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you've got well known from it, and indirectly that's pr probably created some business, but. Now that you're saying you've got a proven system that you can literally turn a tap on and get new clients by just pushing that, that's that's and using the content that you know that it's proven to make more business for you as well is is the obvious thing to do if you want to grow your own business. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So staying focused and and not getting sidetracked. It was a it was a good lesson for me watching that video. It was a really important one. Um, and about, I think we kind of talked about that, but um, what, is, what is the purpose of your business, Gavin? That was one of the questions I wanted to ask you. In terms of? What's the purpose? For, like, what, what is your purpose? And, and what was the business created out of it? Say, because you're reviewing it every year, uh, what is the new purpose today? Yeah, so I working with all the brands that I've worked with. So I'll tell you the purpose when I first started and the purpose now and how it's changed. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. So when I first started the business, I had a, a failed business previous to this, which was working with personal trainers to try and put them into corporate environments and um, to run well, so corporate well-being business. And um, from that, I found that personal trainers were typically terrible at marketing themselves, and so I wanted to create something that. Create a business that helped them 
Um, and that kind of was how I created the, the social media management business, which was what we did when we first started. And um, so that, that was kind of the purpose then was to help personal trainers get out of this kind of terrible marketing. Interestingly, didn't really work with a huge amount of personal trainers, um, just the way it happened, but that, that was kind of why I started. But now, because I've, because I've had years of experience working with thousands of business owners, um, one of the trends that I start, I started to see two trends. One was people wanted to run Facebook ads and they weren't getting results. So, well, first of all, most people had tried Facebook ads. Most people weren't seeing results. So I was like, okay, there's something there. What's that? Why are people not getting results? And typically it's not because of their ads or their ad campaigns. It's because of their overall funnel and the process of getting somebody from not knowing who they are to clicking on an ad to then buying something. That process was broken, not, not just the ad part. So I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Second of all, I realized that so many business owners are relying on what I would call luck marketing, which is um, they rely on referrals, they rely on word of mouth, they rely on going to their local networking meeting and getting somebody to recommend them to someone else. And when you have a business that's operating, I mean, don't get me wrong, word of mouth and all that is, is great. But when you rely on it, it becomes, what happens is you, don't, you can no longer run a business that is scalable, it's not predictable. And when it's not scalable, it's not predictable. And I, I say this because I've been there. It, it affects other areas of your business, such as you, can, you don't have the confidence to hire, to outsource. You don't have the confidence to uh, really put your business out there because you know deep down that your business isn't consistent and predictable. And what happens with a lot of small business owners is their, comp their personal confidence is directly tied to almost like their business confidence and, and their business. Mm -hmm. And so having a business which ultimately isn't predictable and is, re is relying on luck has so many negatives in both business and personal that I was like, well, what if we, I, I've noticed that this funnel is the problem. Uh, if you can fix the funnel, and get people to able to acquire customers at profit, then you solve all of these other problems. Um, and that's kind of what the Funnel Academy was born out of. And I guess that is our purpose, is to help business owners ultimately live better lives by running better businesses and running better businesses by having an actual proper marketing system to help that gets results. Okay, yeah. So going to that, uh, that's coming up as well so what the that's that you kind of explain some of the process of where you you got to that purpose on and it began from something you thought you were going to do didn't quite work out the way that you expected you kind of pivoted and then changed what you were doing maybe maybe multiple times uh, similar to me and then how did you find clarity to decide uh, it's Funnel Academy, like it's going to be Funnel Academy. Where, where did all that come from? Like, I, I know like the experience, but is there something, a couple of things that were specifically highlighted to you that they, they helped you amalgamate that clarity? Um, so yeah, I guess one, one strand of that is, is experience. Another strand of that is I had a Facebook group um, where I was sharing like enormous amounts of free content into it. And I built it up to about 1,500 people. Uh, it was super specific on who was allowed in, so only like business owners. I think we had, we had 1,500 people in there and about 2,000 people were declined over the space of a year. Um, mm -hmm. And what I did one day was I surveyed them and I said, why are you here? What, mm -hmm. what are you looking to learn? If you were able to learn that, what would it allow you to achieve? Uh, and what are some of the roadblocks and the obstacles that are stopping you from doing that? And also, if I was to create a product, how would you like to learn? And um, basically what I got from that was people were saying things like, just things that matched up to my experience. So how to run Facebook ads properly, 
Um, the thing that's holding me back is I'm, I'm not very techy, but if I was able to learn how to run Facebook ads properly, then I would be able to have a kind of more predictable system and, and feel more confident. Uh, and also a membership would be the way that I wanted to learn. Um, and so I had that like specific data and feedback from my members. I had this kind of specific experience over a long period of time and what was actually going on with businesses and, and how you can solve the problems. Um, and then, so to me, it was, it was a no brainer of, well, let's create this product for them. And I created it very, very like, I guess the term is MVP. So I, I created the Academy six months or so ago as a minimal viable product, like bare minimum what I needed to put in there. Uh, and then, got feedback from people and saw what they liked, what they didn't like. Uh, and like I say, because my customer avatar is changing all the time, started to see the people that I wanted to work with, the people that were getting the results, what did they look like? Um, and over time, have started to hone in on what's the, like, the specific thing that we're trying to help them with this academy and why am I trying to help them with it? Um, and when I say experience as well, it also comes down to my personal experience. Like I've been... I've had a business where like you're relying on that sort of luck stuff and you're it's not it's not really it's not really a fun place to be when you <laughs> when you don't have any sort of real confidence in your business. So so all those different things. Uh and I'm still I'm still figuring out dude. Like I, every like almost every week I'm like hmm is maybe we like maybe this is the thing that we do like I've completely yeah only last week have I decided to completely change the roadmap inside the academy because I found a better way to do it so okay. it's, con it's constantly evolving thing of I know ultimately who I want to help what I want them to help how I want to help them and I'm using my experience having the agency working with these guys every day to say okay well this is this part of it's actually not working too well so what can we do to improve it and constantly evolving the actual process to help the overall purpose? Mm, yeah. So, yeah, we're definitely in agreement that it's just, that's, that whole thing is just a never-ending just a never-ending uh, problem to solve for yourself, basically, on, like, what am I about? What is, where are we going with this? It's, it's always changing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's where I am with like my feeling of like where I'm going with things. I'm I'm actually doing a couple of things as well, and some of them are taken off. Other ones are are still kind of that uh, creative process of like throwing throwing things up on the wall and see what sticks. And the reason I ask that is because I'm building uh, I'm I'm trying to build an MVP of uh, a new a new idea that I'm actually going to implement about uh, around books, around what, what I'm, what I'm very passionate about as well as a uh, business. So it's about like personal development books and I'm, I'm building a uh, MVP uh, for that. So that was really int interesting for me to hear and hopefully for anyone else that wants to hear that. And yeah, the, the market research is definitely the stage that I'm kind of at with, um, with building something it's called sunrise book club it's about uh, building the habit of reading books and personal development i built ben's business book which is a, a, free, a free platform and now from there i've got that survey process to do to see what if people what people are wanting and i have uh, i have these you'd probably have that set up in facebook at, uh, in your facebook group yourself where you ask a bunch of questions before you approve them yeah. So that re that was really good. That's been really good research for me to see what people are actually wanting from Ben's Business Book Club, and then creating a product off the back of that has been uh, as, as that's that surveying has allowed me to create a product off the back of that that is that I can package and 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 sell basically to people who are serious about what they know what they want, and and based on a a, a mass a mass answer the same answer that they frequently ask questions or the, the frequently similar problem that each each person has to to create a product around that yeah it's so simple like ask and give but i've created courses in the past where it's been an epic course but nobody's wanted it um mm -hmm. because i packaged it in a way that i thought people wanted but nobody actually told me they wanted it that way 
And so when I was creating the academy, I was like, well, I'm going to complete it the complete opposite way. And if people tell me they don't want a membership, then that's fine. Like, it saved me time and effort. But, exactly. but people wanted it, and so I built it. And, um, yeah, I think when we launched, we had 40 or 50 people sign up on the day. So, um, yeah, yeah, it kind of shows it's worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. So, yeah, the market research is extremely important, obviously, and I, I, that's why I wanted to ask you about that, because I've read through the Funnel Academy website and seen what you're doing with it, and it looks like a lot of market research and understanding the customer and who who it's for and who it's not for has, has been very specifically defined, and uh, it's, it's really... Um, kind of refreshing to see that rather than something that's just been thrown up. But that's what will make it work. That's what will make it successful by doing that upfront research before you, you just, yeah, this is what I want to do, not what others want. <laughs> yeah, and it's been a bit really specific with that as well. So even take when you do these customer forms, look at the language that they're using and use that language. So... Um, mm -hmm. One thing that always springs to mind is when, when I did these surveys, people used terms like, I've been blindly boosting posts on Facebook. And I was like, ah, cool, blindly boosting posts. I'll copy and paste that into the sales page rather than me yeah. using my language, which might be something like, are you creating ads through the ads manager or not? It's like they might not even know what that is. Yeah. So it's using their language as well as um, mm -hmm. and finding out yeah. what they want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like don't use the, the sort of inner lingo in the outside world <laughs> yeah. so that you're, yeah, we can get very technical when we talk about ads and uh, advertising marketing it's, and confuse, can bamboozle people and, and they don't have a clue what you're selling. Totally, they switch off. Yeah. So talk a wee bit about the refinement of, of that as well since the, was it six months ago you launched? Uh, launched five, four, five, six months ago, something like that. Yeah. So from there, like what, what, what have you refined? Like what are the major aspects that you've refined about it? Yeah, so when, when I, and, and, and what went through your head to do that as well? So when I first launched it, it launched on ClickFunnels as a ClickFunnels membership. Um, and I did that because I already have a ClickFunnels account and uh, I had a membership product. And so I did that and it launched and I got people to buy in and that was great. But what, what I quickly found was there was very little scope to improve a ClickFunnels membership in terms of design, user experience, loads of different things. It's just not very good. Uh, and so one decision was to move that from ClickFunnels over onto a custom-built WordPress site. Now, that was an absolute nightmare to do, but it was now, looking back, like the best decision we've ever made. Um, I, I, would I would also say that every, almost every... The, I do quarterly feedback, so I think there's been two feedback surveys I've sent into the academy. Um, and essentially what I do with the academy is build what people want. Well, take, take in two things. Build one, build... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. Just to clarify for myself and others, you do quarterly feedback with the, your existing custom, paying customers. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm doing two things really all the time, which is building what, taking what people want uh, and also build, so building what they want, but also building what I know they need. Uh, mm -hmm. So some people might say things like, I want to learn how to do technical SEO. And I know that people in there, that's not what they actually need. And so I might ignore mm -hmm. that. But taking what they want and what I know they need and trying to package it into something um, is what I've constantly done. So everything from the support calls that we do every week, I've surveyed them on what times do they want the surveys to be every week. Uh, what, how do they want the layout of the calls to be? Do they want to be able to chat with me? Do they want it as a live stream in Facebook? Um, mm -hmm. with the, we got, we've got member-only discounts. Uh, so I ask them, what discounts do you want? And I will go and try to find them for you. So it's just all, like now that I've got the kind of concept there and the process that I need, I, I know I need to take them on. It's finding out from the members, what do they want that experience to look like and be like? Um, so con mm -hmm. constantly serving them and asking them so I can then create that for them and keep them happy. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's constantly, constantly changing. And like even today, one thing that I've never had in the academy 
is a good onboarding process and a good cancellation process. That's something that I'm working on heavily this week. So, okay. like, the product that you create or the service you give will never be perfect when you launch it. But as long as you're committed to just being happy with it launching and then improving over time based on feedback and results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got a post up here from a comment on, from Hannah. Which is, uh, I don't know if you can see that yourself. Uh, I can only see half of it, but it says, I found accepting the losses and learning from them a good thing. I recently had to close down my old Facebook account, and then I've, I can't read the rest of the comment. I don't know if you could read that. Yeah, she says, uh, and start again with my business page. It was annoying at the time because I built up 500 likes. However, these likes were family friends from my old hometown, which was no good for trying to promote a local business. So now I've started again. I'm, I'm able to build a super relevant audience. I've been asking people how they prefer to learn, what content they'd like, and how. It's been very useful. I like websites like Answer the Public. Yeah, yeah. Great website. Yeah, and I wanted, I wanted to say at the beginning of this as well, if, uh, whoever's watching live with us, uh, we've got a good few uh, live viewers, if you do have any questions or comments to put in, please do put them in the comments. Don't be, don't be shy. Um, yeah, that, that's it's, it's a harsh decision to make when you have to just uh, maybe cut your losses and, and start again with something completely different. But it's usually uh, it, like a blessing in disguise, that kind of idea. It it's usually takes you to the next level. You have to let go of what you're holding on to to like, set yourself free to the next the next level. Yeah, I've always said if I had to start a business again from tomorrow, I'd actually probably quite enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you've got all this experience now. It's like, imagine going back to high school and like for, for men, especially like going back to high school and, and not, you wouldn't struggle with like socializing and talking to girls and things. It's the same thing like in business. If you, you go back to the beginning, it would be really enjoyable with all this experience and uh, wisdom. Yeah, not living in the unknown. Yeah, yeah. It would be fun. You could play with it. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So, one of the things I wanted to ask as well was uh, what ads are you currently running just now to your Funnel Academy? Like, have you, have you got an ad running on Facebook right now to your ad funnel, uh, for, uh, to Funnel Academy, and, and why? Like, what, what's the, the thought process behind yeah. that ad running, and what is it doing? I've got about 50. Um, okay. The, so I'll, I'll always have three types of ads running at any one time, normally. One, which is just purely promoting my content. So promoting videos, promoting the podcast. That's there to, mm -hmm. to try and build the audience. Second of all, uh, I, I like to try and run a direct ad to uh, Funnel Academy from people that don't know who I am. Because, it's, because you get a seven-day trial for a dollar, it's, it's so low commitment that I'm able to get people to buy into the Academy at about the same price as their first month um, right now, which we're hoping to get down based with a new onboarding sequence and things that we're creating. Uh, and then retargeting ads. So if somebody visits my website, watches a video, uh, visits the sales page, visits the checkout page, but doesn't buy, they'll get a specific ad uh, based on that, that part of the journey. So always, always running ads. And uh, like annoyingly, Facebook like to disapprove them. So yesterday they disapproved <laughs> all my ads for, for no reason. I had to get them right. manually approved. Um, but And how do you do that? So you can, there's, there's normally just go and chat to Facebook. So they've got support chat. Um, they've also got like forms and things you can use now if your ad hasn't been approved within 24 hours. But mm -hmm. typically their, their live support chat on Facebook Messenger is really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you have, did you say you've got 50 ads running right now? And that's, I'm, is that all towards your, I'm guessing about, yourself? I'm guessing about 50. Yeah. They're all for me. And they, are they interchanging? So like changing around the like the pictures, um, black and white, upside down, and different things like that. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you: does, does that actually work? Does black and white work? And does upside down images? I've seen that's a new thing happening. 
where people are getting attention just by here's a picture of me upside down. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure upside down would work, but uh, I was looking at a, a website called trends.tabula.com. I think that's the, the link, and that basically looks at uh, different ads and tells you what's working right now based on trends. And black and white, I, I believe, in the UK was performing better than colours in the last week. Um, so all these things you just have to test and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. But um, yeah, one thing that worked really well for me was uh, I remember a few weeks ago there was that big trend of aging your face by 50 years. Using, using yeah. that app. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen your ad. So I did an ad for that. And that. Yeah, <laughs> and that worked really well. So yeah. just okay. try and cool stuff like that. Being, yeah. It, I've, like, I guess like creativity comes into it a lot oh, yeah, as well. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. So mm -hmm. just always thinking about, well, trying something, seeing what people relate to, what people don't relate to, and then adapting based on that. But always try and think of how can you make your ad interesting and relevant and capture. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to capture people's attention. So always thinking how can we capture people's attention with this ad? Uh, so trying to make it funny, trying to make it stupid, trying to make it okay. totally random can always be. It's always fun. Okay. A fun thing to try and do. Yeah, and that might be why the upside down things just it's different and creative. So like. Someone's just thought of that, and I've seen that ad a few times, and, and different people following it. So, like, someone's creative, it works, and people teach it, and then that becomes a trend until it's overdone, and then someone needs to get creative again and find out the next thing that works. Totally, like with that, with the uh, old face thing, that worked really well for me for like a week or two, uh, and okay. then the results started dropping because it's like, oh, not one of those things again. Like, I'm sick and bored of that. But what, when yeah. I first did it, and it was new, so. Mm. Like you say, you, you have to do keep trying to keep your eye on the pulse of what's actually going on, yeah. and then everyone else does it, and then it's time to move on again. So you always have to try and be be first to the market. Yeah, uh, I was selling gloves on Amazon when I was trying lots of different businesses out, and uh, one of the things I, I found work was someone's finger bleeding uh, to protect like so protective gloves, and uh, that went like viral like and I, I just put more money into it and it worked really well and I, I wanted to ask you about that because I use that over and over and over again in different ways with different pictures <laughs> of people's hands bleeding um, and they like saying don't be these guys and um, does is there a limit like have you found that there's this thing like that that uh, old man picture face of you is it came to an end after a week, but have you ever found something that you've been, been able to sustain over years or yeah. months? Um, so we, we do, we've got a lot of clients in the health space um, over in the States, like regenerative medicine practices. And one thing that we found works really well with every single client across every market is x-ray photos. Okay. Totally random, but like yeah. x-rays of knees has worked time and time again for years for us, for these clients. And right. couldn't tell you why, but it works. <laughs> I wonder if it worked in like newspapers, like going back to old school advertising has just worked like the whole, the whole time. Yeah, maybe. I, just, I don't know if it's eye catching or yeah. people are like trying to see what's going on. I, I don't know, but, but okay. like I say, it's always hmm. converted really well. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. So like what I wanted to ask as well about like, I, I've found, and I don't think everyone has found this, but people know how to get traffic from paying for ads. That with stuff we've talked about is um, how to get grab attention and how to then get people to click on you. But how from the other side of the ad they click on you and they go to that. What obviously this is, a gen, this is quite broad and it could be very generalised because it's, it's specific for every person and every business and niche. But what happens at what should happen at the other side of that click what what we, what should we if you were to give like one tip of like a landing page or what where to send them to the home page or what should happen at the other side of that click yeah i think that, i think the biggest thing is the journey that somebody takes from an ad to wherever you take them after they click on that ad has to be a congruent journey like they you can't 
give them, you can't have an ad mm -hmm. that when they click on it, takes them to a website that looks nothing like the ad, says nothing like you spoke about in the ad. So it has to be a really congruent journey. Okay. Um, now, with that, we also have to think about who we're targeting and what sort of language we can use with that person. So if these people already know who we are, then we can afford to be more personal. We don't have to sell what we're doing as much. If these people have no idea who we are, then we, we also have to bear that in mind and the messaging that we put out to those people is going to be completely different. We might have to sell a little bit more. We might have to explain who we are a little bit more. Um, so just, I think the two main things are what the, the journey has to be congruent and we have to be aware of who that person is and speak to them in a way that makes sense to them in yeah. that part of their journey. Right. Okay, yeah, never... I guess I've never really realised how important that side of it being... It has to be very similar to the, the, the ads how, and being congruent from Facebook over to the website um, how much that, that matters. So, yeah, that's a really, a really important point. Um, landing page or website? Do you, do you send them to a landing page that's specific to that? Always, yeah, yeah. always. So the, re the reason being, web websites are obviously great for a million reasons, but when it comes to advertising, we want people to take a specific action. And so we need to send them to a page that, may, that invites them to take a specific action. And if we're sending people to a website homepage, for example, you're going to have like four buttons at the top there in your menu. You're going to have multiple things on the page. You're then going to have all the buttons and stuff in your footer. There's far too many distractions there. And it's like I say, it's not a concrete journey for them at that point. Because right. if you're talking about something in your ad, then they go to your website. It's like, okay, what do I do now? So we always want to have a specific journey laid out for that person and they either take it and that's great or they don't and if they don't we have to ask ourselves why are they not taking it what can we do to improve yeah. that journey to make sure that more people take it yeah yeah okay and yeah i've seen i've, had, I've seen your website for uh, uh, funnels academy uh, it's it is kind of set up here set out in a way that it's, it's not got a lot of distractions uh, and it has got a, like a clear call to action almost looks like a landing page it's set out in a sort of sales letter um, do you send traffic to the to that specific home page yeah so we test it definitely so we've got different I've got different parts of the funnel that we send people to like giving them a free guide and then offering them the chance to uh, sign up for a trial sending people directly to that page sending people directly to the checkout page so I'm always testing mm -hmm. these things to yeah. See, basically, to see what people do. Okay. And then, if we see what once you see what people do, you can make your mind up on well, let's change this. Let's send more people to it. Let's stop sending people here. Um, yeah. Everything, everything, everything. It's just a big testing game, always. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what was your results from sending people to your homepage? So, if I so I've got two websites. I've got mrgavinbell.com and I've got the Funnel Academy. If I was to send people to mrgavinbell.com, they would probably do nothing because that's my main website where I've got my blogs, my content, and a million different links. If I, when we send people to the Funnel Academy, uh, like we've had people signing up for about £40 direct. So that's something that we're testing a lot just now, sending people directly there, buying them for £40 as customers, and then seeing how long we can keep them for. Uh, and obviously, if they stay for... For a couple of months and we've made our money back but um like i say now we're looking we've now seen those numbers we've seen the areas in which people drop off and we're now trying to put a process in place that means we've solved the problems for example the checkout mm -hmm. the checkout page didn't convert very well so we've now we're now right. building a better checkout page to try keep more people on taking the action we want them to take yeah right okay and see with um When we, what was the question? So, it's really the idea of like, what are the different parts of a funnel that you need to build and how long does it typically take, should it typically take to build a funnel up? 
because I've found that process. I, I, I'm good at getting traffic. I've not got a problem with that. But I must say, I'm, my, my strength hasn't been the, the copywriting. Um, it's maybe not, it's not my strength. It's, I, I feel a bit of resistance to creating the content, creating the funnel and, and getting the email system in place. So uh, do you delegate that? I guess I've built, given you a good few questions, but yeah. you get the idea. Yeah, I think when it comes to a funnel, I think a lot of people overcomplicate it, uh, and that's where they start to feel the resistance. Is there? It's almost like they aim for the million dollar funnel before they have any, mm -hmm. anything live. Now, what we really need, the way that I look at it, and I think the way that I think everybody should look at it is. First of all, determining what a funnel is. So a funnel is essentially a series of steps that we take that we need somebody to take in order to buy from us. So what we need to do, first of all, is look at what are we trying to sell? Is it a, our agency package for £2,000 a month or is it a £40 ebook, whatever it is? And then look at, well, what does the buying process typically look like if we remove the idea of a funnel? Now, if it's a 2K a month product, then typically we're probably going to have to get people onto the phone before they, before they buy from us. So then, we, so then the funnel be, doesn't become trying to sell the two grand package. The funnel becomes trying to sell the phone call because, yeah. because we know that we, try to, we then sell to them on the phone. So we then have to try to think about, well, how do we get somebody from not knowing who we are onto uh, a phone call? Now, there's a million different ways that we could do that. We might want to offer them a free guide, a webinar, uh, show them a case study that we've got, and then say, if you want a result like this, then book in a free call, for example. So a million, a million different ways to do that. But I think when it comes to actually creating the funnel, rather than worrying about the copy and the emails and all, all the big things that go into creating a funnel, is just start with um, like almost two pages. So right. the landing page, like download my free guide to XYZ, and then the confirmation page, which is thank you for downloading my thing, XYZ, book in a free call with me, for example. Mm -hmm. And then we run ads to it and we see right, what are people doing? Because it doesn't matter if you've got the email system set up and all the back end complex stuff set mm -hmm. up. If people aren't even clicking on your ads, people aren't even taking that initial step. So I like to just start with a bare bones skeleton, almost to test whether my headline works. Right. And then if I find that people are actually signing up to the thing that I'm giving away, then that's when I'll start going and adding in the emails. That's when I'll go in and start looking at how do we make this funnel better. Uh, okay. It's so like, like a case study video, a case study funnel that I, I created uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is here, basically, here, do you want to see how we help small businesses with their ads? Sign up to this training if you do. Then when they come onto the second page, it says book in a call if you want to get results like this. I set that up in about half an hour, just right. two basic pages. And then when people started to sign, like people weren't signing up to it. So I then was just editing the headline and the text in it. And then when we started to finally get people signing up to it, that's when I then started to add in the emails and trying to plug in the gaps. But I don't, right. I, I can't be bothered creating a massive complex funnel if I don't know it's going to work. So... Always yeah, just start yeah. with the bare minimum. Mm. It's, yeah, it's, it's very similar to doing research, doing your market research up front before building a massive business that that's going to be a failure yeah. because you've not done research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That 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 actually really helps me because I definitely get that overwhelmed feeling of right. I know how to get traffic. Now it's time to build build a funnel, and the funnels can just it, even not. I guess I have a relation to the, the word funnel as a complex thing. Yeah. Uh, and maybe other people do as well. And I'm thinking about email autoresponders and, and that, I guess, is just not my thing. Like, it's, it's not something I want to do. Uh, do you use, um, you mentioned that you moved back to just a WordPress uh, design for your website. Do you do that for your clients or do you still use click funnels for creating, for creating these uh, Campaigns. Yeah, so I still use ClickFunnels for uh, our clients' funnels and also my, my funnels. So, um, like, if I'm giving away a free guide or getting people to sign up to something, I'll typically build it in ClickFunnels. Um, okay. Just because it's so easy. 
It's so easy mm -hmm. and it's so fast to do. And then if, right. if it works, then you can maybe look at investing in a WordPress site if you want to. You don't need to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is I, I have a, a, obviously a full-time web developer that builds websites for me. So in that case, would you recommend for me um, and any other person who can, who can get a, a website up like that uh, with WordPress, would it be worth going to ClickFunnels still in that case? The... So the, the reason I like ClickFunnels so much is it allows me to very quickly make edits and changes to a funnel. So I can get something up in half an okay. hour uh, and then we can try it. And then if it doesn't work, I can simply go in and change the title, for example, or the image or the video yeah. or whatever it is like, like that. That's what I like about it. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if you have a developer or a team that allows you to do that from a word, like on WordPress or whatever, then go for it. But yeah. if it's going to take you a week before you submit a request to your developer, they get back to you testing and all that sort of nonsense, then, then yeah, you're better sticking with something that you can do yeah. faster. Okay, yeah. So it's like more nimble to use uh, ClickFunnels. It's yeah. just quick and easy, which is, like, it definitely has its negatives, um, but it's just quick and easy to create stuff, which is, which is what you want at the yeah. end of the day. Okay. I uh, want to ask you about your time as well, because obviously we started this a bit later. So, I, I think some of, a, a coach was actually calling me there, so um, I, I might I might need to go just now. I, I'm waiting for Gemma to come in to let me know. But have you got any time? I need to be off in five minutes as I've got a coaching call. Okay, okay. Well, well, let's uh, let's uh, finalise it here. Quick question: uh, favorite book? How to Win Friends and Influence People. Okay. Yeah, and. What has been your main source of personal development? Um, well, I've, al I've always read, so I do, do enjoy okay. reading, but I'd probably say the biggest wins I've had have been in-person uh, workshops based on a specific skill, like speaker training, okay. for example. Okay, uh, yeah. Going and having like an intense two days on one specific skill. Okay, yeah, that... I agree with that as well. The, the going all in on some on one topic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got I've got lots more questions for you. So let's let's maybe do a part two in the future um, in a year when we're doing probably something completely let's different. Do it, yeah. Let's yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, thanks for thanks for joining. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Thanks for everyone that joined and all your your input, Hannah and, and Michael. Um, yeah. So. Good luck and uh, keep it up, mate, uh, Gavin, and all the best for you. So next time we're in Edinburgh, hopefully we can catch up and, and, and see each other in person. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Cool. Nice one, man. Okay, then. Cheers. Cheers. See you later.